my name is Beardo Cleaver. Welcome back to my channel. Hope you're doing most excellent today. Today, I want to make a little video uh, just showing you guys my, my new record collection. This is all vinyl that I've bought brand new over the years. Um, I have a separate collection of used vinyl that I've also <laughs> acquired over the years. Um, so before we begin, I want to give a little backstory of like my relationship with vinyl and the music and everything. So, uh, my parents were into music, I think as most kids' parents are, if they're from, you know, the, the mid 20th century, like 1950 around there. Uh, so we had a big old, uh, record player. It was about six feet long. It was a giant wooden piece of of technology it also had an eight track player and the only eight track that i remember my dad playing was a guy named nestor pister and i guess he was kind of a comedian not unlike frank zappa maybe but uh yeah so my parents had a huge vinyl collection of like classical gospel uh not really like uh modern rock or, or i guess modern back in the day but like the pop music like classic rock stuff like the beatles or led zeppelin or whatever uh but my sister tells me that my dad was really into a group called boney m which uh <laughs> they're famous for a song called rasputin and they're like you know dancey r&b disco stuff so that really surprised me uh so yeah my parents had a huge ass record player and when that still worked, I, I occasionally and uh, you know on and off would buy vinyl, new and used. Uh, but one day that just stopped working. I guess the needle broke, and that made me stop buying vinyl. And then just a few weeks ago, this was like years ago, years ago, and then just a few weeks ago, I went out and bought. A uh, brand new turntable for myself, just like a hundred twenty dollar one, uh, Victrola. Uh, I don't know the 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 make and model, but it's uh, it's pretty sweet for what it does. It's got like built in speakers. Um, it's got Bluetooth uh connectivity. You can hook it up to uh external speakers as well, so it uh, does the job well. And I got uh another new record in the mail today, which I consider the holy grail of records for me and i've been waiting on that record to arrive before i start uh my vinyl collection video but now we're here it's here you're here hopefully you're here <laughs> and now we can start so these are in no particular order no particular order um but yeah, i'll talk about them and what i like what i dislike and all that stuff first one ramones this is their uh, self-titled debut album. Classic, classic fucking punk rock album. I love it so much. This is like one of the definitive punk rock albums. Uh, it's got all the classics on it. Blitzkrieg Bop. Uh, I want to sniff some glue. 53rd and 3rd. They're all good. Beat on the Brat. And the cool thing about this, there's a little misprint on the uh, LP itself. See if I could show it on the camera there. Beat on the Brat is misprinted on the record itself. It's called, or it's written, Beat is on the Brat. Beat is on the Brat. You guys can see that. So I don't know if that makes it more valuable or less valuable. Doesn't matter. I'm keeping it. <laughs> I actually, uh, I had the, uh, the three records after this as well but i uh got rid of them because i needed money uh leave home uh rocket to russia and road to ruin and yeah those those first four are just classic just you know simple three chord four chords if you're lucky lucky punk rock music and joey ramone's voice is one of the most unique voices in rock and roll very uh uh sensitive you tell that he's he's a he's a sensitive man at heart or was a sensitive man at heart next one 
Green Day. This is 39 Smooth. Just 39 Smooth. Uh, the CD version is called 1039 Smoothed Out Slappy Hours, uh, which is this album plus other uh, EPs combined onto CD, but this is the proper first full-length Green Day album, 39 Smooth, featuring such favorites as going to Pasalacqua at the library uh, and and the self-titled Green Day song. Yeah, Green Day was the band that made me want to play guitar. Not this album, uh, but the song Basket Case made me want to play guitar. Uh, so I went out and picked up this brand new. Yeah, I love it. Next one. Joey Ramone. This is his first and I think only solo album. Uh, came out I think very soon after his death in 2001, I believe. I believe he died, what, Easter Sunday, 2001, in April sometime? Yeah. Uh, and it's got a cover of What a Wonderful World. And I got this from my sister for Christmas, I believe. Another cool thing about it, very, very glossy cover. See the reflection there. This is a really cool thing. It's pink. Look at that. You don't see pink vinyl every day. And it's got the, the same logo that the Ramones use, that Eagle Ramon. Or that Eagle logo, not the Eagle Ramon. Yeah, there's Joey, Johnny, CJ, <laughs> and Eagle Ramon. Tommy Ramon, Giddy Ramon, Eagle Ramon. That's it. <laughs> haven't listened to this one as much but it's it's uh pretty much what to what you expect it's maybe a bit more well produced and like um a bit more layers to the songs than just your just your power chords like the ramones are, are uh are used to or are known for i should put that one on again next one it's a picture disc brian posein Mr. Posein is a comedian. Uh, my favorite role of his was uh, as the roadie in the Rob Zombie movie, The Devil's Rejects. And he's not in that one for too long, but <laughs> it's, a, it's a memorable role. So this is like a comedy album. Uh, talks about, you know, very self-deprecating stuff about like being fat and being an old metalhead and stuff like that. Live in Nerd Rage. Could be my dad. Could be my dad. I actually met the guy at a local comic book store when he was here doing a set at the local uh, comedy house. A few years back. Probably, I don't know, seven or eight years back. Oh yeah, and I got him to sign this too. So this is signed by Brian Posehn right there. It's a signature right there. Very cool. And yeah, I haven't listened to this one since uh, it was back on my parents' old record player. Next one. Deep Purple. Uh, what's it called? Perfect Strangers. So I think this is the first one with the reunited Mark II lineup of uh, Roger Glover, Richie Blackmore, Ian Gillen, uh, John Lord and Ian Page or Pagey. I've heard it pronounced different ways. Pagey, Pace. Yeah, so who knows? And look at that picture of John Lord in the back. Where is he? Right there. Look at that. That's fucking the coolest motherfucker I've ever seen in my life. Uh, featuring such hits as I think the hit was Perfect Strangers. Yeah, obviously not as good personally to me as like Machine Head, but uh, still, still decent, you know. Rock and roll, heavy rock and roll. I think this was in the 80s. Yeah, 84. So maybe a bit more polished sounding, a bit more in line with what was popular in like metal at the time, like uh, Ozzy and stuff like that, White Snake, stuff like that. All right. And these next two are some that I bought pretty recently again. The Beatles. This is uh, the Red Album, 1962 to 1966. It's a compilation featuring all the hits from those uh, years between 1962 and 1966. 
26 classic tracks, all analog masters from original master tapes. Love me do, please please me. From me to you, she loves you. I want to hold your hand. All my loving, can't buy me love. That's the love disc. <laughs> Hard day's night, and I love her. Eight days a week, I feel fine. Ticket to ride. Yesterday, help. You've got to hide your love away. We can work it out. Day tripper, drive my car. Norwegian woods, bird has flown. Nowhere man, Michelle, in my life. Girl, paperback writer, Eleanor Rigby, and Yellow Submarine. Man, all of them. All of them fucking classic. And that's just the first half of their career. And, and they have other songs, not on this collection that it could, could, uh, could be considered classics too. These guys were just probably one of the most prolific bands or songwriters that ever existed, like Paul McCartney, John Lennon. They were together for what? Eight years? And put out such quality songs and just the range in which they evolved over those eight years or so from like like doo straight up rock and roll R&B influence to the uh the like almost, almost progressive psychedelic um more uh political um and uh deeper lyrics from their from their later years which leads me to the second half of that the Beatles blue album this is 1967 to 1970 Oh yeah, the red album here is still in its original uh, plastic. I didn't open this one up, but I did open up this one and listen to it. So the songs on this one are Strawberry Fields Forever, Penny Lane, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, With a Little Help from My Friends, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, A Day in the Life, All You Need is Love, I am the Walrus, Hello Goodbye, The Fool in the Rain, The Fool on the Hill, rather, Magical Mystery Tour, Lady Madonna, Hey Jude, Revolution, Back in the USSR, while my guitar gently weeps, Obla di Obla da, get back, don't let me down. The Ballad of John and Yoko, Old Brown Shoe, Here Comes the Sun, Come Together, Something, Octopus's Garden, Let It Be, Across the Universe, and The Long and Winding Road. Oh my god. All of them classics. All of them classics. So yeah, if you're, uh, if you're just getting into the Beatles, or if you want like a comprehensive uh, collection of, of their best known songs, and if you don't want to, if you don't know which album to buy, I would honestly go for the Blue Album because that's my favorite Beatles period, the later half, the psychedelic, kind of heavier, uh, where they're not singing about girls all the time in love and holding hands. They're uh, singing more about, uh, their, uh, not that, you know, singing about love isn't personal, but more, uh, I don't know, topics that include the world. Yeah. There you go. Next one. Astodon. This is a, a record store day exclusive from 2000. I want to say 17. I could be wrong. It's a uh, yeah double LP. The gatefold. Oh yeah. Which I was going to talk about at one point, but. What better time than now? One of the reasons I love vinyl is the art and just the fact that you're holding something. This is like an actual thing that you can hold and collect and look at and smell and cherish uh, rather than a digital code. Like, what the fuck's up with that? <laughs> Who? Yeah, I collect digital codes. Yeah, fuck you. Look at that. There's the gatefold. Of the live Mastodon show. One of my favorite bands, probably my favorite modern band. Yeah. Great. And uh, the production on this sounds so crisp and clear. And uh, hearing these songs live, live uh, with like an added sense of urgency and anger and uh, aggressiveness, it's really something. And of course, these guys can shred. Everyone knows that. Everyone knows that. But they're not like your typical Ingve Malmsteen, Eddie Van Halen shredders. They're more uh, old school, which I like my music old school. And one of the main bands that that uh, Mastodon was inspired by, Neurosis. This is Given to the Rising. Came out in 2007. 
Yeah, that sounds about right. 2007? Not only is a gatefold, it's a, I guess, a triple gatefold? Or is it? Yeah, it is. Maybe quadruple gatefold. No, just the triple. Holy shit, one dropped. So that's that. And then if we go like this. Whoa. If I get it all on camera there. Look at that. This is art. This is something you can hold in your hand while you listen to it. You can make it an event. You can read the lyrics. You can really, you know, take a good close look at the album art. And just, you get like a, a total sense of what the artist was trying to convey f uh, for that particular album. Rather than just having like a little tiny image of the uh, cover art on your phone. Fuck. Neurosis, one of my favorite bands. And yeah, this is my only Neurosis LP for now, but I do want to get probably uh, through Silver and Blood and Times of Grace. Next one. Cheech and Chong's Up in Smoke. This is the uh, 40th anniversary uh, edition of uh, this soundtrack. Comes with a lot of goodies, too. Comes with some rolling papers. I can open it up without shit falling out again. Rolling papers right here. And... Comes with the soundtrack to the movie on CD. Comes with the movie Up in Smoke on Blu-ray as well. And I think DVD too, but I know Blu-ray. Comes with a little picture book. Insert, I guess. <laughs> One of my favorite scenes from the movie. Where they play uh, Erake My Eye. Dun -dun 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 -dun. Yeah, I love Cheech and Chong. And that's like quintessential, uh, not only stoner comedy, but just comedy in general. Next one. Gotta take it out of the plastic. There we go. Another one by Mastodon. This is their first, or their, their major label debut, Blood Mountain. Came out 2006. Signed by the drummer. I met him, Braun Daler, right there. He signed it. Yo, Tim. That's my name. My name's Tim. He said, keep it surreal. Right there. And I've been trying to since that day I met him. <laughs> uh, the artwork is a bit more, I guess, expanded than uh, the CD version. I think the CD version just has like a square right about there, maybe. But yeah, look at that expanded artwork. And, and the vinyl itself is a pretty bitchin' color. I can get it out. Oh, it's green. It's not green. It's not green. It's not green. One of my favorite Mastodon albums. I go back and forth between this one and Crack the Sky uh, for my favorite. But I think... Blood Mountain is like a better representation of their overall sound. Like it's more aggressive than Crack the Sky. It's, it's there's faster songs like The Wolf Is Loose and um... <laughs> I guess that's probably the, their fastest song or one of the fastest songs. Yeah, it's just like a better representation of their sound. It's brutal. It's uh, just as psychedelic and just like tripped out as Crack the Sky. Like, the uh, the vocoder in Circle of Sisquatch and uh, just the very pretty guitar intro to Blade Catcher, which I covered on my YouTube channel right here. Check it out a few months back. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, one of my favorites. This is uh, Dimebag Daryl, guitarist for Pantera, who got shot and killed on stage Tragically, sadly, December 8th, 2004. 
holy crap, that's almost 16 years ago. I still remember when I heard that uh, you got shot. I was having supper with my family, and my mom said, hey, did you hear about a, a guitarist that was killed on stage yesterday? Or something like that. And I'm like, no. Oh. And she didn't say who it was, so I just assumed it was like, like a small-time guitar player, maybe like a, a local bar band guitar player. Uh, so I, I didn't think anything of it, but then I went on on the TV after, like CNN, and everybody was talking about how like Daryl Abbott, the guitar player for Damage Planet Pantera, was shot on, on stage, killed on stage. And I couldn't believe it. Like, I still can't believe it. He was, he was a superhero. He was larger than life. He was so soulful and expressive when playing his guitar. No one like him. Like, he played fast, sure, but he put emotion and thought into the notes, and he was just a larger-than-life character. Like a cartoon character, like yeah, like uh, Yosemite Sam mixed with, uh, I don't know, <laughs> Eddie Van Halen, maybe? Uh, but yeah, so this is, this is a, a solo album, a Record Store Day exclusive, I believe. Came out 2017. Uh, it's got five songs. Ain't No Struggle, True, Let's Go, Twisted and Whiskey Road. Uh, the second song, True, is not what you would expect a song written by and performed by Dimebag Daryl to sound like. It sounds very like 80s, like an 80s Genesis song or something. It's still very good. Still very good. And my first and only tattoo so far, I don't know if you can see it right there, is <laughs> a guitar. Uh, silhouette, I guess, of uh, his Dean ML guitar. That's how much he meant to me. First tattoo and many more to come. Next one. Green Day. This is Kerplunk, their second uh, full-length album, and the first with their current drummer, Trey Cool. Uh, so, again, classic Green Day sound, uh, featuring such favorites as 2000 Light Years Away, uh, one of my personal favorites, Christy Road. I love that song. I love the breakdown of that song. Uh, features an early version of Welcome to Paradise, one of their staples now. Uh, yeah, great, great, great early... Uh, not early punk, but, but early Green Day. I don't really like current Green Day. Yeah. Next one. Sleep Sciences. This is uh, their comeback album, released on April 20th, I think 2018. Is that right? Or 2019? Yeah, let's say 2018. Yeah. Uh, some people call that day 420. I want to be friends with those people. <laughs> And again, look at the gatefold. Look at that. Not only is it a beautiful, delicious breakfast, but look right there. I can get it on camera right there. Some righteous buds, man. Yeah, I love this album. It's a uh, classic sleep. So it's like the long. Well, it's, the, it's, it's like mixed up. It's, it's separate songs. It's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, six songs. As opposed to like a song like Dope Smoker, which is one song technically. Uh, but they still have that like the droning sound. And I love Marijuana's theme. I think it's just classic. Not only sleep, but just like metal, classic metal. And that's the song that I use for my intro video, by the way. Uh, Mar Marijuana's theme. Featuring members of Ohm. Al Cisneros, the bass player and vocalist, High and Fire, Matt Pike, guitar player, and this is actually their first album with Neurosis drummer Jason Rader. Uh, so it's cool to hear him play drums on an album that's not Neurosis, because this one is less tribal sounding than Neurosis. It's more like just classic Sabbath-inspired metal. Not as angry. 
and it really makes you appreciate how versatile of a drummer he really is. Next one. This is uh, Cheech Chong's Up in Smoke 40th Anniversary Limited Edition of 4500. Uh, Up in Smoke, the song. And then on the B side is Up in Smoke featuring Cheech's, Cheech's additional Spanish verse. A shit like a pot leaf, too, so that's pretty cool. And it's got a scratch and sniff sticker. Right? Right there as well. It smells like a head shop, basically. <laughs> Next one. Barter. Uh, this is a band from Quebec, I believe. Featuring current Voivod guitarist. Daniel Chewy Wangrain. And I guess his brother is in this band too. His name is Francois Wangrain. Um, so this is like probably the most metal LP I own, besides maybe the Mastodon ones. Uh, I've only listened to it once, but it's like, it's a good, like, death like, voivodish death metal. It's good stuff. Beastie Boys, Licensed to Ill. This is the LP that I bought with my turntable when I bought it a few weeks ago. Uh, it's good. I like it. It's uh, But I wish I would have bought another record that they had there instead, Paul's Boutique, because I hear that that is the one where they kind of matured musically and lyrically from, uh, from like boys to men. Not, not boys to men, the group, but from boys to men, the, uh, the act of growing up. <laughs> and look at that look at that gatefold it's not no it's not those punks they are featuring such classics as fight for your right and uh girls uh she's crafty i believe is on this one no sleep till brooklyn i think no, she's crafty is on this one could be wrong and we'll think about this cover especially on vinyl, is that you can hold it up to a mirror and that right there, 3MTA3, eat me, eat me, eat me. <laughs> Asked it on White Walker. This is a picture disc. It's a single that they released for uh, Game of Thrones. Uh, so this isn't really typical Mastodon. It's more like what they sound like on their latest EP, Cold Dark Place. It's like more acoustic-based, mellow, uh, not as angry, more melodic, more trippy and psychedelic. And uh, Ron Daler singing too, I believe he sings on this one. And the B-side is just the same song, just a cappella. But look at that cover art. I've heard that picture disc actually sound worse than uh, like normal, I guess, black vinyl. Uh, but I haven't listened to this one yet, so I can't really confirm it. Not that there's a standard black version of this to compare it to. Uh, but I, like, I just like picture discs, you know, for the artwork and the collectability of it. And uh, yeah, there you go. Next one. Mastodon again. You can tell I like Mastodon. This is Atlanta. They are from Atlanta, and this is another Record Store Day release uh, featuring Gibby Haynes. I forget what band he's from. I should know this. Does it say anywhere, Hunter? I'm pretty sure this is an original song written specifically for this. It says artwork, illustrations by Brent Hines. Look at that. I know he did some of the art on Blood Mountain as well. And this is more of a upbeat, punkier number. Released, I want to say, between Crack the Sky and The Hunter. So, let's say 2010, roughly. That doesn't say exactly on here. Yeah, Mastodon, Atlanta. 
next one. Snoop Doggy Dog. This is, what's it called? It's called Digitally Remastered. No. <laughs> Doggy Style. That's what it's called. Doggy Style. Yeah. Uh, featuring Gin and Juice and my favorite. Uh, what's it called? Who am I? What's my name? Where'd I go? What's that smell? Classic, uh, like, West Coast, G-Funk, rap, hip-hop. Just reminds me of, like, playing San Andreas. And it's just well-produced, well-written. Uh, it's, it's like an audio movie, almost, because there's, like, musical skits, stuff like that. So yeah, I do want to get more like rap, hip-hop, soul, R&B stuff, not just rock and metal. So yeah, yeah. If you, have, if you guys have any suggestions on like essential, essential vinyl that I should buy again, even though I probably have the, uh, the CD in my collection too, please, please let me know in the comments below. This is Godspeed, you Black Emperor, or Godspeed, you Black Emperor. Uh, F sharp, A sharp, Infinity. I ordered this directly from their band camp, and it arrived pretty promptly in a few weeks. Uh, this is the first one. Uh, and the cool thing about this is, uh, on the second side, if you let the record spin after it's done, it doesn't stop. It keeps on going infinitely. And the notes that are played are F sharp and A sharp. Hence the name F-sharp, A-sharp, Infinity. And this is a very uh, well-made, handcrafted piece of work. The record sleeve itself is very thin. So it, it feels like it, it could tear very easily, and I don't want to tear it. And this picture on it, it's, uh, it's not like... It's, it feels like it's glued on, and it's not part of the same piece of paper as the sleeve is. So I want to be really careful with it. Comes with lots of bonuses too. So here's the record itself, just in a black sleeve. This is the record. It comes with some cool pieces of art that you can explore while listening to the album. Yeah, Godspeed, you Black Emperor, are from Montreal, I believe. Montreal, Canada. Uh, Post-rock, if you had to give them a genre. And it's, it's, uh, I think it's more of a collective than an actual band, like just a revolving cast of musicians and friends just, just jamming and making music together. So yeah, lots of, almost like postcards and newspaper write-ups and schematics. Very cool. And let's see if I can get it out of here. There it is. <laughs> Comes with a penny flattened on a railroad track. So I don't know if they have like a jar of these that they just grab into and put it in the envelope whenever someone orders this vinyl or if <laughs> they go down to the tracks and make a custom one for, for everyone. But either way, like what other band includes stuff like that in any release? Yeah, so if you, if you want a unique piece of vinyl, check out F-Sharp, A-Sharp, Infinity by Godspeed You, Black Emperor on Constellation Records, I believe. Well, yeah, like I said, I just got this from their band camp. Godspeed, you black emperor. Bandcamp.com. Let's put this back in here nicely so it doesn't get tore up, banged up, and dead to the world.
There we go. Next one. We're nearing the end here. This is Rock and Roll High School. Starring PJ Souls, Vincent Van Patten, Clint Howard, Day Young, and Ramones. Not the Ramones. Just Ramones. A uh, <laughs> great rock and roll uh, movie about rock and roll and high school. It's called Rock and Roll High School. It's been a long time since I've seen the movie. But yeah, it's got a wicked soundtrack. It's not just Ramones on this. It's, uh... Well, there's lots of Ramones, but it's Nick Lowe, Brian Eno, PJ Souls. There's Devo on it. Chuck Berry, Alice Cooper, School's Out. Todd Rundgren, Brownsville Station. So I guess a few songs that were, like, popular at the time and a few artists that may have uh, influenced the Ramones, too. And it's got a Ramones medley featuring Blitzkrieg Bop, Teenage Lobotomy, my favorite Ramon song, California Sun, Pinhead, and She's the One. Alan Parsons Project, the Alan Parsons Project, not a Alan Parsons Project, the, the Bart, the, the Alan, the, the Alan Parsons Project, uh, best of. Uh, so I'm, I'm somewhat familiar with, with the band. I, I have, uh, Tales of Mystery and Imagination on CD. Uh, but I'm glad I have this now. It's like, it's a, it's a career spanning. Well, I don't know about career, but maybe they're, they're early hits. Uh, I Wouldn't Want to Be Like You, which I think is in the GTA 5 soundtrack. Eye in the Sky. Uh, yeah, those are, those are the first two songs. So I do want to check out more for Alan Parsons' project because he did engineering work on... Dark Side of the Moon by Pink Floyd, and I think he worked on Abbey Road by the Beatles, too. So it's just a very well-produced, um, kind of 80s-sounding, uh, like, pop rock progressive stuff with, like, more, more of, like, an upbeat feel. Uh, kind of dystopian and, um, like, cynical. Yeah, but still catchy and good. Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. I bought this one specific, uh, specifically because I was watching a documentary on Netflix. Uh, Hip Hop Evolution, I think it's called. And yeah, I, I just felt like I needed to know more about like the history of hip hop and just kind of experience the foundation of that because I know that like they got all a lot of their sound from taking samples from classic R and B groups and, and whatnot. But this this isn't more this is really hip hop. This is just like classic R and B soul stuff with, you know, a real band and trumpets and drums and uh yeah, there's a there's a guy there's one guy playing brass, chops Oh no, it's it's the chops horn section. <laughs> Unless that's his name, Chop's Horn Section. I doubt it, though. Uh, but yeah, it's good stuff. It's it's uh, catchy, classic, and I think the message was in a Grand Theft Auto game, so I know I heard that before. As soon as I put it on, I'm like, wait a second, I heard that before. All right, now we're getting into the Seven Inches and the Holy Grail, the one I got today. Mastodon. This is uh, Crystal Skull, Capillarian Crest Split. So on one side it's Crystal Skull, the other side is Capillarian Crest. See through. Uh, yeah, both of these songs are on Blood Mountain. So I think this was released as like a promotional single before or as the album was released. And pretty cool cover too. And both of those songs are some of my favorites from Blood Mountain. This is a Green Day bootleg. Pick a winner. 1994 UK radio session. Picked this up at a local record store. And uh, yeah, I was, a, I was a sucker for bootleg Green Day. It's got the songs that we all love or, and know. Basket Case, 2000 Light Years Away, and She. But uh, these might be acoustic. It's been a while since I heard this, but I remember I have a bootleg 
or something. I've heard something where they play these songs acoustic. It might not be, probably not, but it's just, yeah, it, back when they were young and full of snot and piss and vinegar and angry and on speed and writing better songs and being more uh, uh, visually appealing on stage. Yeah, it looked like they just walked out of a, a thrift store and put on whatever they, f they thought looked the coolest, and I can appreciate that. <laughs> Next one, Frank Zappa. This is a Record Store Day exclusive again. Came out in, I think, 2014 or 15. Uh, it's got Don't Eat the Yellow Snow on the A-side, which is a, a single edit reissue, which I think is the same edit that appears on his compilation album, uh, Strictly Commercial. And on the B side is Down in the Dew, 1973 alternate mix, previously unreleased. So I'm guessing that's from the same sessions, uh, probably meant to be on Apostrophe, the same album that uh, Don't Eat the Yellow Snow was on. Yeah, this guy, this guy is one of the most prolific, uh, like rock musicians that ever lived. He put out, I think, 61 albums. Uh, before his death and I have about half of them or like two fifths on CD and I only have one on vinyl like one proper studio album on vinyl uh, Cheeky Booty but that's a used copy I got so it's not in this video collection Mike Oldfield's single the opening theme from Tubular Bells, which is also the opening theme to The Exorcist. And it's still in its original rapping too, so I haven't opened this one up. Uh, yeah, from uh, yeah from the album Tubular Bells, which is <laughs> a proper studio album. I think it's his first studio album. And both songs on it are called Tubular Bells. It's just Tubular Bells Part 1 and Tubular Bells Part 2. Uh, it's great, like progressive rock and it's it's constantly shifting it's like from one movement to the next and yes it's just a great trip green day 1000 hours so this is uh an ep of four songs uh 1000 hours dry ice only of you and the one i want so this combined with 39 smooth and another ep make the CD 1039 Smooth Out Stoppy Hours. See, there's each, that the title is comprised of three different parts. 39 Smooth, 1000 Hours, and Slappy. Uh, so yeah, I, I, even though I, I prefer uh, early Green Day over later Green Day, uh, these, these aren't my favorite early Green Day songs, but it's so, still something to have in the collection. And I think I got this just like I got uh, Kerplunk and the 39 Smooth and the next one directly from their website back in like early uh, mid 2000s maybe. Next one. This is the Slappy EP, kind of the companion EP to a thousand hours. Yeah, four songs: Paper Lanterns, Why Do You Want Him. 409 in your coffee maker and knowledge knowledge is a cover of uh operation ivy song and yeah this these two eps and the 39 smooth lp uh they're with a drummer called uh john kiffmeyer i think his name is or he also went by al sobrante i believe so a bit different style than trey cool like being not a drummer it's kind of hard for me to explain exactly how but trey cool is definitely tighter than john not a knock against john or anything but uh yeah trey is definitely a, a more tighter and just more energetic drummer i would say still still good great great early green day punk rock songs all right we got three more to go another green day this is the last green day uh, live at Gilman Street. This is a bootleg that I picked up at the same local record store as the other one. It's got three songs. Long View. And here it's interesting. It's 
long view is two words, whereas the version on Dookie is just one. It's, it's just long view. But here it's long view. See? So it's long view, better not come around, which is an early version of when I come around. So it's like, better not come around. And don't leave me. I'm not going to sing it again, don't worry. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is live at, what was it, 924 Gilman Street? The legendary Oakland, Berkeley, whatever, punk rock DIY venue. Put out by fans for fans. There you go. Live at Gilman Street. All right. This is uh, Star Wars, A New Hope. Uh, I guess a 10-inch? Record Store Day exclusive from 2017 yeah still unopened in the plastic um it's got two songs like i said side one is the main title and side two is the throne room and end title so i guess two songs three songs total i'm not a big star wars guy so i don't know why i bought this i know i wasn't really into star wars at the time that i bought this i'm more into them now but i'm still not that big of a star wars guy so if anyone wants to buy this, this is brand fucking new in the plastic. In the plastic. Pretty much mint condition. If, one, if anyone wants to buy this, send me a, uh, a serious uh, message, I guess. Uh, yeah, serious inquiries only. Uh, private message on, I guess, Instagram or Facebook, Twitter. All Beardo Cleaver across uh, social media there. But yeah, I might just keep this and give it to my brother-in-law or something because I know he's a real big Star Wars fan. All right, last one, the Holy Grail. It's the White Whale. It's the Holy Grail. It's Mastodon, Leviathan. I just got this today. I'm so fucking stoked. This is uh, the album that I first heard by Mastodon. Uh, at first, I didn't like it, believe it or not. I wasn't used to that type of music. Just the very chaotic, especially chaotic drumming, drumming, or drumming. Uh, and just the, the type of vocal styles, which is like very bellowy and, um, yeah, not really death growls, but there are some like, you know, signature Brent Hines screechy cat parts too. Uh, and the, the track order for this is a little bit different than the CD version. So on side one, it's got Blood and Thunder, Sea Beast, Iron Tusk, Megalodon, Naked Burn, Aqua Dementia. And on side two, it's I Am Ahab, Island, Hearts Alive, and then Joseph Merrick. Whereas the CD version is Blood and Thunder, I Am Ahab, Sea Beast, uh, Island, Iron Tusk, Megalodon, Naked Burn, Aqua Dementia, Hearts Alive, and Joseph Merrick. So they just changed it around to uh, make room on the LP because Hearts Alive is like 13 or 14 minutes long. I'm going to hold this right here for a screenshot for the, uh, for the thumbnail. So I'll show you guys the, the gatefold. Oh, look at that. Beautiful artwork by Paul Romano. I think his Instagram handle is workhardened, at work, workhardened, workhardened. And I think my next tattoo is going to be that, that wave symbol. Everything's backwards right there on probably my left or right shoulder. Yeah. And of course, this is again an expanded artwork uh, than what you see on the CD. Yeah, this is highly regarded as one of Mastodon's best albums. And this is from where I heard about them first. I think it was in Revolver magazine, uh, press about Leviathan. And it's not your average, cliche, boring black vinyl. No siree, Bob. Look at this. Blue splatter. I got this from their uh, Relapse Records alumni store. Didn't take that long to arrive. Just a few weeks. And I played it earlier today. Uh, for, for myself and some friends. And it sounds fucking killer. Which leads me to my... Uh, another topic. or uh, uh, Related topic though. But 
another reason I like vinyl is because it just sounds better, man. Like, for real. Uh, <laughs> I know it's kind of cliche to, to say that, but I can hear uh, better separation between the instruments. I can make out the separate instruments better. I can make out the tones better. I can appreciate the tones of the guitars and just the the different instruments like keyboards and whatever and especially on like the not necessarily bought new but like the new music that's been released recently on vinyl i don't notice the crackling and the hissing and the skipping well i've haven't noticed skipping at all actually but it's uh it's, I think, my preferred way of listening to music because I, I don't have Spotify. I don't really listen to music when I'm, like, walking around, standing in line. I only listen to music when I'm, you know, at home, chilling, whatever, playing video games, just hanging out, uh, or driving, which I uh, play CDs. Um... Uh, but yeah, if, if I'm just like if I'm listening to music, if, if I'm sitting down listening to music, I think vinyl is the way to go. It's just, it's like an event, you know. I, I know it's been said before, but it's true. It's like you got to make time for it, and I think you, like like they say with anything, the more time you put into it, the more you get out of it. So maybe there's something to that. You know, you take the record out, you hold it at it, at its edges, try not to scratch it or put your fingerprints all over it. I'm very careful with it. I don't want to, like, muck up the covers because this is fucking art. Look at that. This is beautiful. It's great. I love it. I love it. And, as you can probably tell, if you've watched my other videos or know me in real life, I love music. That's one of my main passions. I'd say that is my main passion. You can hear me getting a little choked up about it right now. Uh, but, yeah, I could talk about music all day. Uh, so that is my new record collection. Oh, this is all vinyl that I've bought brand new over the years. Uh, I have a somewhat bigger used vinyl collection, which I may do a video on in the future. And wow, I just realized the video was for this is almost an hour long. <laughs> I may cut it up. I may not. Probably not, though. Uh, but yeah, that's about it. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, don't forget to follow. That'd be much appreciated. Every new follow gives me hope. It fills my heart with joy. It makes me happy, just like music does. Hey, you made it to the end of the video. You're the best. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to click that like button, share your comments down below, subscribe to my YouTube channel right here, and follow my Twitch at twitch.tv slash Thanks for watching, and praise Iomi. Peace.